thanks for coming back to Roadies Roam the World for our fourth and final installment of our two-day trip to Kennedy Space Center. Remember to like and subscribe for more content. We finish our morning at the Space Shuttle Atlantis exhibit with a launch preparation briefing by Shuttle Commander Charles Bolden as part of the Shuttle Launch Experience. Hi. Welcome to the Shuttle Launch Simulation Facility. I'm Charlie Bolden. I've flown the shuttle into space four times, twice as a commander. My colleagues have put together an interesting little experience for you today. You're about to go on a high fidelity launch simulation, and I'm going to help you get through it. As you climb through the hatch, the hopes are already soon like it's a living, breathing thing. Then they pull back the access arm and left. Everybody else is smart enough to get out of the earth. You and your crewmates are strapped to the reason why. Within 400 feet of the pad, flames and heat from the engines will kill you. Within 800 feet, the sound will kill you. Within 4,000 feet, the snakes and alligators might kill you, because all that low frequency vibration really stirs them up. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Those sparks are hydrogen free burners with a spark. They help prevent a fire or explosion by burning off any excess fuel around your vehicle. At T minus 6.6 seconds, you'll hear a loud roar and you'll feel a big rumble. These guys were the most powerful solid fuel rocket engines ever flown. The SRVs ignite when the countdown gets to zero. Seven, six, Here, the forward thrust of the rockets is fighting the resistance of the air, and the shuttle is like an aluminum can being squeezed harder and harder to make sure this doesn't happen. We throttle down the engines to maintain pressures we engineered the shuttle to withstand. Once you pass through Max Q, we throttle the engines back up. It was at this moment that we lost the Challenger in 1986. So this is always a thoughtful moment in any mission. Now it's time for you to experience the sensations of launch firsthand from inside the shuttle. See you aboard. After the briefing, we get aboard the Shuttle Launch Experience Simulator to strap in and get a little taste of what the astronauts see, hear, and feel during launch into space. You all really sure you want to do this? Because everything's looking good for your launch. As you can see, your shuttle should be pointed straight up on the pad, so we need to get you into that position. You comfy? Normally, the astronauts would have to wait like that for a couple of hours, so just sit tight. I'll be back. Just kidding. Now, remember, at 6.6 .6 seconds, your main engines will ignite. Then the shuttle will twang. Then the SRBs are going to light, and you are off.
Upon exiting and getting your feet back underneath you after the terrific launch experience, you wind your way down the stairs, passing a plaque from all 135 space shuttle missions from STS-1 in 1981 through STS-135 in 2011, completed by the Space Shuttle Atlantis, before checking out a few final exhibits, including a set of 44 and a half inch or 113 centimeter shuttle landing gear tires. So as I leave the Atlantis shuttle exhibit, we came to the memorial for, I believe, the astronauts that had not made it. And this is the reflecting wall. Known as the Space Mirror Memorial, this monument is in remembrance of the NASA fallen heroes and was dedicated in 1991. In addition to the astronauts from Apollo 1 and the Space Shuttle Challenger and Columbia that we have paid tribute to in previous videos, the Space Mirror recognizes other astronauts, astronaut recruits, test pilots, and instructors affiliated with NASA. We pay tribute to those so honored, Freeman, C., Bassett, Williams, Adams, Lawrence, Carter, and Allsbury. This is a T-38, it's a training plane that the astronauts would use to not only keep up their flying skills, but also transport them when they were going back and forth between Houston and here at Cape Canaveral. Here is a glimpse of a concept for the Mars Rover Vehicle Navigator. This all-terrain vehicle would travel at 10 to 15 miles or 16 to 24 kilometers per hour during normal Martian exploration. Upon heading into the Heroes and Legends exhibit, we hear about the personal heroes of kids, astronauts, and everyone in between. Personal heroes.
After hearing about what defines a hero, we get to see heroes in action through the sights and sounds of another visual extravaganza that is almost a 4D experience. As we head into Mission Control during John Glenn's Mercury mission, we see the real Sigma-7 capsule flown by Wally Shira for six orbits in October of 1962.
Just outside the Astronauts Hall of Fame, we see more artifacts, including the Gemini 9A capsule flown in 1966 by astronauts Stafford and Cernan. Thanks for joining us again and make sure to like and subscribe so that you can join us on our next adventure. And that's going to wrap up our two days here at the Kennedy Space Center. It was a fantastic time.